And we're back. <laughs> this is the second start of this show. I am Chris. I'm Mark. And we're the really Cromwell Hoax, summer 2015 edition. Remember the 90s? <laughs> remember the 90s? I feel MTV. like I should have a hip hop handle now after you said that. Well, okay, the reason we're laughing is I tried to start the show <laughs> and I screwed it all up. It, okay, every summer in, when we were kids in, in the 90s, the, the MTV, would, oh, every summer was like a thing. So the real world, San Fran, and, and, and Spring Break, you know, 1993. And like, yeah. All the whole summer was like this product they were selling. Right. And, and um, everything was, all these beautiful people and beautiful kids and all the top stars. Yeah, Myrtle of the day. Beach or wherever, yeah. And they packaged summer <laughs> and the whole summer long. MTV, summer 93, we're coming to you, you know. It's like a whole thing. Oh, yeah. And it, it, even at the time, I, and of course, I've always, me and you both have been slightly cynical on the subject. You got things. me thinking about that VJ, Duff. Oh, Remember her? Amazing. Oh, my God. Yeah, she was amazing. Wherever you are, Duff. Kennedy's on Fox News. <clears throat> yeah, she's still rocking it, yeah. yeah. So anyway, so even then, because we're both naturally cynical, we were laughing and make fun of it all then because it was, oh, yeah. it was so obvious they were pandering to youth and trying to like... Oh, yeah, yeah. It was a bunch of old guys. If you pander, just know that I'm somewhere laughing. Just So, so it know. was obvious to us that they were like mm -hmm. trying to like purposely appeal to young people and we were seeing right through yeah. it and i remember having schoolmates that would buy into all this stuff mm. and we'd just laugh about it so to me i wish we had the money we could create our own graphic and sell ourselves <laughs> like that so the incredible hoax summer 2015 and we could have like us like yeah doing all cool type thing yeah to, and to, we'll, to emulate uh, that and we'll be like all those 90s hip uh hip-hop artists they always seem to get their nicknames from like beef you like T Bone and Pork Chop, you know. <laughs> I don't know what's left. He's meat. I don't know what the <laughs> white meat was the thing. I, I guess I'll be leg of lamb. <laughs> but it doesn't roll off the lamb. You know I can be prime real. I'll be that was the original L O L. I'm the original L O L. Leg of lamb. L O L. Okay. <laughs> well speaking of pandering. Oh, I didn't say yo. Yo. Yo, L O L in the house. YOLO. <laughs> Myrtle Beach, 93, MTV, right here, rocking it with Duff. And they would do the spring break. They would do the spring break, and they would, like, the whole spring break, they would be at a certain beach and following. And <laughs> you could tell it was completely manufactured. Oh, yeah. It was just horrible. Horrible, horrible. Yeah, you just know a director just before, just when they came back from commercial, okay, start dancing. <laughs> back at MTV, you know what happens. So. At least, hey, man, at least that MTV back then actually showed music videos. I couldn't even tell you what MTV programs now. I couldn't even it's, tell you what it is. I have no idea. It's a spinoff of that uh, Jersey Shore. It's all I know. They I, just play that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's like that Snooky show, whatever she's doing. They do all that kind of thing. They do all that. Uh, I literally don't ever go to those channels ever. Ever do I never? I, if I watch a video, I go to YouTube. And there's all those, music video, I'll go to YouTube. And those are like Real Housewives of Orange County and all that wow. crap. So, okay, mm -hmm. we've wasted enough time on that. Uh, right. What is our topic today? <laughs> now I'm fascinated with coming up with more hip hop names. All right, anyway, back to movies. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if this is a good transition at all, but uh, if there is somewhere out there a fictitious movie hall of fame. Yes. I was thinking, okay, what would be the incredible hoax? It's year one of this Hall of Fame. What would be our fi first five that we would put on a card and turn in? And our personal choices. Yes, personal choices. Choices we talked about this in the Hall of Fame. This, we did a little bit of show prep on this one. <clears throat> yes. Uh, at length, we discussed about So it's not from a historical perspective. Coming out from a personal perspective. Correct. Your personal vote for... Correct. The movies Hall of Fame. Yeah. All right. Pick one to go a little bit of depth on. We don't have time to do this ten names in depth. So read the names and just pick one of them, or just maybe briefly say each one. We just don't have time to go painstakingly through each one. Yeah, I can just do quickly the a recap. Here are the five with and, a recap, and then we can have a recap. Right, right, My, here's the five with a, a sentence of why. <clears throat> do that. Charles Chaplin. Are this in order? You got an order? Is this like an order thing? No particular order. Okay. No, no. In no particular order, 
Charles Chaplin, obviously trailblazer and and storytelling right. and dramedies. Dramedies. Um, <clears throat> well, it's true. Okay. Um, Akira Kurosawa. <laughs> That's gonna be his hip hop analyst. <laughs> Yo, dramedy. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> dramedy seems like a manufactured name. Mm. I, did did he actually call him that back then? Oh no, no, no. That's a nineties. Okay, all right. So I'm staying with our nineties. That's 90s. why I'm staying with our nineties. That's why I started laughing because I, no, I can't no, picture no. Charles Chaplin. Like, no, hey, let's no, no. these dramedies. No, no. Well, they were. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Charles Chaplin. Okay. Trailblazer. Yes. Okay. Kira Kurosawa for his epic uh, filmmaking. Um, and of course, um, Stanley Kubrick was such an innovator in, in terms of shooting things with a very um, unique style. Unique. Very, very influential. Unique George humor. Lucas, uh, not only just for his hit films, but also his behind the scenes contribution is frankly enormous yeah. and then last but not least uh, when I you have to have an actor at least one actor on this list I think so to me I think the greatest of them all is clearly Errol Flynn there's only one of him he's tops all right okay was that fast enough <laughs> that was fast enough uh, mine would be um, <laughs> Scorsese <laughs> Martin Scorsese because he makes the best dramedies. Uh, what, what's the summer uh, friend? Scorsese, I don't know, man. These are nothing. Mine are very personal. I, I'm not gonna say anybody on my list is a trailblazer or that kind of stuff. I just like them the best. I think to me, Scorsese has consistently made the most exciting movies visually, and his editing pace to me is my favorite style of editing and editing pace. Uh, uh, him and Thelma Schumacher, obviously. I guess Thelma Schumacher would be uh, an honorable mention. But anyway, so Scorsese for the overall way to make a movie, how it's put together. Uh, Coppola, I mean, when you make Godfather, Godfather 2, The Conversation, and Apocalypse Now all in the same decade, decade I mean, he's just uh, <clears throat> the largeness of his films. The bravado, that's mm. what I, I, it attracts me. Tarantino, hands down, positively, period, the greatest writer in Hollywood history, in my opinion. I say Hollywood because I don't want to like make it sound like film history is, you know, leave out something I'm not aware of. But anyway, so yeah. Uh, he's one and, of, yeah. Yeah, he's my, absolutely my favorite writer. Plus, in a era of nothing but franchises, he's like the lone Hollywood auteur. He completely makes his own movie. He wrote it. It's shot his way. It's mm. cut his way. It's he's like the lone wolf out there where yeah he's top to bottom. It's his baby. Uh, so in, in this era, that's what so the two actors, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Clint Eastwood and John Wayne, to me they are the epitome of the movie star. Uh, they go hand in hand. Yeah. Um, did it for decades too. Did it for decades. Clint Eastwood still with us and still making movies, and uh, directing. And John Wayne, to me, um, from childhood was a legend icon. He was like a, a god, if you will, and he still holds that place. You know, it's like John Wayne is like some elevated platform of the movie star, contributed largely from our childhood at being raised with a grandfather who idolized him. You know, yeah, we well, idolized our grandfather, yeah. and he idolized him, so that made him even larger. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the just the idol, the the, the just the, the the largeness of the personas on screen. Uh, I will mm -hmm. throw an honorable mention out there. Uh, one thing we made the list, I was like, well, in today's PC culture, there's no women on it. Thelma Schumacher, I mean, the greatest editor of all time. I mean, she puts them together, hands down. Period. In the story, in my opinion, the greatest editor of all time, Thomas Schumacher, Martin Scorsese's editor, long time. I mean, she just edited Raging Bull. Yeah. Uh, all the new stuff. I mean, she's just, I'd have to go look. I want to name a name. Uh, I'm not sure if she did Taxi Driver back then or not. I can't remember. But just hands down, the greatest editor of I'm all time. Pretty sure she did. And even in today's, I mean, when she edited uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, Shutter Island, 
I mean, it's just editing was just perfect. So she's yeah. never lost a step. So that would be my honorable mention uh, for this list. So what would be your honorable mention? Um, I like sticking with the ladies for my honorable mention. By the way, um, you know, Catherine Hepburn. You know, for decades, another actress that just did it and did it for a long time, or just to maintain a high bar of excellence. I recommend anybody go rent, since it is summer, go rent her film uh, Summertime and just see a master at work. I got the so there summertime, you go. summertime, man. And David Lean directed it, so there you go. It's You're, you're, it's you're, a in, you're in for a treat. It's a win-win now. It's a win-win. All right, so that is our movie Hall of Fame. <laughs> We're in the summer of 2015. Baseball, baseball Hall of Fame. See us all connected. <laughs> we'll have to do a second one of these our second induction another time that's uh, interesting yeah I thought it was a neat idea because you know uh, I'm a of course, but I'm here's a the rule fan. here's the rule for next time if we put them in you can't re-put them in in other words so since you those guys I can't put Kubrick in because he's already in you know what I'm saying well yeah it's, it's like I was, th I was thinking of the football hall of fame when I came up with that yeah. idea well, once they're in, you know, you can't go, oh, well, let's put Joe Montana again. Well, he's already in. So know, I can't on my next list have thing. Lucas or Kubrick or whoever. Yeah, they're already in. He already in. put him in. That's right. So I like that. So we'll have a whole yeah, maybe ten, ten new names next time. Part two coming. All right. So you're well, he's Dramedy. I'm LOL. And we're out. That's you.